Hi and welcome. I'm delighted to make this video for Penny and it's going to be on the Etude in A minor by Ludwig Scheidt. And this piece is a grade seven piece on the Trinity 2018 to 2020 syllabus. It's in ternary form. It's in three parts, very clear cut. A minor to start with, a C major in the middle, and then back to an exact repeat of the A section to finish off. And let's think it through hands separately first of all. The right hand is playing this kind of, um, uh, <laughs> lots of semi-quavers, very um, passage work is the word I'm looking for. And it's made up of the chord of A minor, isn't it? There's A minor chord. And then it's, I'll explain the missing notes in a minute. It's the A minor chord in its different inversions. There are some other notes as well. Scheidt has decided to put in that note as a passing note. On that one, there's our little passing note, the F. And for that position, there's the passing note. So we've got, I play them as crunchy chords. Let's go down and do another octave. And the fingering, this is the fingering that you might want to contest. <laughs> Third finger could work there, but I put it to you that that puts the hand under a little bit of stress there, it's only minor, whereas that, my hand is certainly feeling more relaxed. It's also more difficult, but Ultimately, I think it is a better fingering, the fourth finger on that A there. So a great way to practice would be to, let's give ourselves a nice steady beat. I'll tap it on here. So you'll probably see it rather than hear it. And let's see if we can do a chord every three beats. Two, three. I'm learning the positions. Can I get to the next position in time? Two beats. Here we go. might want to be trying this with me. Always pause the video. Let's do one. Yeah, I reckon I now, I now know where I'm going. And use different rhythms to practice that run. For example, a dotted rhythm. And can I keep it as even as I possibly can? Is every note sounding equal. Hmm, that's okay. Another great rhythm would be to do this. The first note, hold on, and then whiz through the next few. First of the group of four. And did you notice how once I've got the thumb there, my hand is trying to get to the next position while the thumb is still there. Ready for the next group? Ready for the next group? And by all means, go a bit, go a bit further than you really need to. Explore it all over the keyboard. You can also do um, a sort of stressing different notes. This is quite tricky, but let's, let's, I'll show you what I mean. So stress the first beat of each group of four. second the third the fourth and all of these things do at a speed where you can really hear it and make sense of what's going on and I think we need to memorise at least those two bars. We need to know exactly where we're going. And that kind of detailed practice will help cement it into the memory. Let's jump to the left hand for a minute. You've got what's difficult is, of course, the little bit of leaping that needs to happen. 
but we've got an A minor chord. I'm going to use the pedal. And then an E chord. And that E chord, when it comes, is a dominant seventh, isn't it? E chord with the one, two, three, four, five, seventh to make it a dominant seventh chord. And that draws us to A minor. And that's a good chord sequence, that. Tonic chord, dominant chord, back to tonic. We can invent some phrases over the top of that. transpose that into C major. Hmm. What did we say? We said tonic, then a dominant. Let's try improvise over that. sounds very effective, I think, going from major to minor. Um, you might want to explore that a little bit. Great to be improvising and being creative. I'm now going to, let's go through the right hand. I'll go through it nice and steadily, this A section, and we'll see what crops up. And I'm going to play it as written for now. That fourth finger. And we're going to hear this three times, aren't we? Shander, da, 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 da. It does a swell and then it repeats. And it's meant to get quieter as we work our way down the keyboard. Scale. And what scale is that? And if I know what scale it is, it'll probably run better. It's the scale of E, isn't it? The scale of E major, E being the dominant in A minor. twist before it heads back to the opening material. Let's carry on. Dying away. Fourth finger on the F. And there's options for fingering here. You could do, and as they say in the book, look, thumb on the G, which take, takes you to that chord. Or, Quite like one, two, three, one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three. And that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three thing has a certain logic to it in my mind. Um, whichever you choose, let's go for that one for now. Similar pattern to the to the shape to a, at the beginning. Fourth finger on that one. We know that chord already. That's just a chunk of the opening, isn't it? And then to finish off, and that last little bit gives me a good um, moment to explain something. When we learned the piano initially, especially for scales, let's take a, we're taught, aren't we, to pass the thumb underneath, and keeping it nice and legato, and coming down, we do, something similar, the opposite, passing over the thumb. And those last two bars, if I play it slowly, here we go, I will do the same thing. There's the wrist, um, the hands getting at a slight angle, wrists move nice and flexible. But I put it to you, when it's going fast, in fact, what you will do is more just shift the hand and you won't see me sort of twisting the hand as much. Yeah, does that sort of make sense? So think of that sort of more of shifting the hand and less of the that kind of crossing over movement. Um, let's work through the left hand now. Let's 
and then we can talk through the chords that are going on. So A minor we've looked at. Dominant. And I'm using the pedal here exactly as it says in the book. Off. Dominant of the dominant. That's a B chord, isn't it? To E and E turns into a dominant to take us back to A minor. tonic chord, A minor, becoming a dominant seventh chord, which takes us to A as the dominant of D minor. Again, going through these kind of detail, I'm not sure whether you're still with me, <laughs> but from bar 13, so we've landed in D minor, and then we've got chord one, it's an A minor chord, but in second inversion, very common this which becomes a dominant seventh chord, which takes us back to the tonic. Now then, I'm going to play them both together, but nice and steadily. as I possibly can. A little swell there. I remember when I recorded this for the performance, I tried deliberately to keep the speed absolutely steady. There are no writs in here, are there? But um, there is an argument at the end of that line, and I was feeling it that time. Just to ease up a little bit to lead us back in. Little. Can you hear the harmony taking us to D minor there? A bit louder. The fourth finger on the A, that can catch us out. Quite bold in those last two bars, I think. And then we have the middle section, the B section. It's a contrast, it's very different material, and we're in the major key here, we're in the relative major of C major, at least we are to start with. And straight away, we may have a worrying sign. We have a slur, which tells us to play legato, and we've got dots, which tell us to play staccato. And we want things to be black and white, and they're not. <laughs> so that's sort of, it's saying, the composer is telling us he doesn't want uber smooth. He doesn't want very detached. He wants somewhere in between the two. And the pedal is bobbing up and down quite fiercely as well, exactly as it's indicated. And that makes good sense to me. Now those last two bars are very definitely in four-part harmony. Sounds a bit like a hymn tune. And it's great if, just for that little chunk, let's try and sing through, um, if you'll excuse me, I'm just gonna do the left-hand parts. Um, so let's try that. Let's try the bass part, for example, and the G in the bar just before. La da 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 da. So then I start to feel I know that line. Da, 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 da. Can I sing the tenor part, the top line in that? Da, 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 da. And then when I put them together, my ear might just latch onto them and be aware of them more. following one of the parts I played there. So a bit of singing is always good. And then from bar 21, this line has a lot of action for the fourth finger, doesn't it? Four. Weak fingers, that's tricky. Enjoy that 
That tenor line there is lovely, isn't it? A little bit of a writ there, he's actually indicated one, hasn't he? Let's play that line again. Again, I'm going slowly. Bit of a swell. There's also an argument for playing this section slightly slower than the first section. It's more lyrical, isn't it? Although that isn't indicated, I have to admit. <laughs> Can you hear that modulation there? He's moved to, he's not really modulating, but he's moved to the chord of F there. That B flat takes us to F major and these these uh, lines, this next few bars, are leading us back in. Again, we've got glimmers of what's about to happen. And this is definitely reminiscent of the opening passage work, isn't it? But this run is quite awkward. the chord of E dominant seventh, isn't it? Quite usefully practice it over several octaves. Good ways to repeat notes. Let's try two of each. Is it even? If, I, if it sounds like that, then just slow it down. Can I do three of each? Can I do a sort of oscillating figure? I'm just going to take two notes at a time. Um, those are all good ways of practicing this kind of passage work. Um, it is a wonderful piece and there's a lot in it. Um, definitely start slow, but be aware that ultimately it does need to go fast. And things like both hands together, but with that kind of rhythm will be very helpful, I think. That kind of practice, where you're f make, playing some notes really, really fast, too fast really, but you're keeping the whole thing really steady so that left hand's got to know where it's going. Um, some time spent doing that will be very beneficial, I think. Penny, I hope that's of some help. I think it's a great piece and uh, be patient with yourself. I'd love to, perhaps you could send me a recording of you playing it. That would be wonderful. Um, bye bye for now and good luck.